Welcome to the Fearless Leaders Entertainment Network. And now, here is your host, the highly sought after leadership coach and advisor and best selling author, Dr. Kathy Greenberg. Welcome to Fearless Leaders. We're going to be talking today to one of my dear friends and one of the great thinkers in our community on coaching and leadership. Marshall Goldsmith. He's going to be talking today about his new book, Triggers, and we're going to be talking about how it relates to many of the different principles in the Fearless Leader Sharpen Your Focus book and also in our Fearless Leaders Blueprint for Success. Welcome, Marshall. It's a pleasure to have you with us. Happy to be here. Great to talk to you. So, Marshall, you talk about courage and how important it is for people to look at themselves and question, what am I doing? Why am I doing it? Can I get better doing it? When I work with my clients, I never try to make them change what they do not want to change. I try to help them change what they do want to change. In theory, you might say, how do I get people to work on things that's inconsistent with the way we, they see ourselves? In practice, I've never really had a problem with this. Most people I work with are very open to the idea of getting feedback. I only work with people that care, that want to get honest feedback, that want to get better and make a sincere difference. So Marshall, one of the things that you and I have done over the years is worked with many, many people, many leaders, many CEOs, many future leaders. In fact, to this day, the work that we did globally on the two generations of leaders is still the most comprehensive research that exists on the subject of the future leader. So when you think about how leaders become successful, what, what is it that you're doing? What is it you're engaging them in that allows them to see clearly what they need to do differently. Very important to look at the concept of leadership at the micro level. And I think it's very important that everyone assume responsibility for leadership. Let's say a customer service person who's at a hotel. Well, they can be responsible too. A classic case study, two flight attendants, one's positive, motivated, upbeat, enthusiastic, one's negative, bitter, angry, and cynical. Same pay, same uniform. Have you ever been on that flight? We've all been on that flight. What's the difference? The difference is not what the company's doing. It's the difference is coming from the inside. Well, what I like about what I'm doing, especially with active questions, I have a case study I do that really brings the point home. I say, imagine you're gonna go to a meeting, a boring meeting, stupid PowerPoint slides. You're dreading the meeting, but you have to go. It's gonna last an hour, you have no choice. At the end of the meeting, if you were gonna be tested on four questions, did I do my best to find meaning, be happy, build positive relationships and be fully engaged, what would you do differently? I've asked over 100,000 people that question. And they have all kinds of answers. I'd listen, I'd get involved, I'd work with the people, I'd try to find meaning. And then you know what I tell them? Do test yourself. See, let's go back to the two flight attendants. One's negative, bitter, angry, and cynical. One's positive, motivated, upbeat, enthusiastic. Three-hour flight, who's the loser? The airline really isn't the loser. This one person is a tiny part of the airline. As a customer, after five minutes, I could care less what the flight attendant is doing. The real loser is the flight attendant. What I teach people is, if you're in that meeting for an hour and you're cynical and angry and turned off, the real loser is not the company, it's you. See, what I love about what I teach people, I always say, is it good for the company? Yes. Is it good for your customer? Yes. It's better for you. Of the many leaders that you've worked with, I believe 27 have actually endorsed your book. Who has been one of the most successful leaders that you can talk about that can help us understand how Triggers has made a difference in their overall leadership and the performance of their company? Uh, the CEO I've coached that improved the most is the CEO I spent the least amount of time with, who's a fantastic leader, my friend Alan Mulally. And his goal was to really improve reaching out across the organization when he was at Boeing and be inclusive. And he's a great leader to start with. Well, what he did is he quickly grasped how our coaching process worked and then went one step further. Every one of his direct reports then identified who they needed to reach out across the organization. They all started getting feedback. They all developed a plan. And at the end of the day, about 200 people got better, as not as judged by themselves, as judged by the people across the organization. Why? He started with himself. Then he said, I'm going to do it first. Then it worked for him. Then he said, let's all do this, and started measuring it for everyone in his entire team. Describe for those of us who don't do this work on a regular basis, how do you engage a senior executive at that level? And how do you get them to open up to you? 
One of the great challenges of helping successful people change is something called the superstition trap. Any human or any animal will replicate behavior that's followed by positive reinforcement. So the more successful we become, the more positive reinforcement we get. The problem is we fall into a trap. The trap sounds like this. I behave this way, I am successful, therefore I must be successful because I behave this way. What I really focus on doing is helping people realize, yes, you're successful because you do many things right and in spite of doing some things that are stupid. And I never met anyone who's so wonderful they had nothing in the in spite of category. So we all have a little something in spite of. What I do for a living, I give people confidential feedback. They find out what everybody around them thinks. They learn what they're doing right. And then they learn what they can do better. I help them develop plans and improve and get better at that. I understand that there are some questions, some key questions that you have created over the years that are very consistent, that help you create the research that's necessary to help you understand how individuals will respond to these triggers in their day. Tell us a little bit more about that. Here are my first six questions every day. And these are the six questions I recommend for everyone. And every question starts with, did I do my best to? Did I do my best to? Now what's important about that, it doesn't even say I succeeded. Did I try? Well, the first one is, did I do my best to set clear goals? Rather than saying, did someone set goals for me, did I do my best to set goals myself? Did I do my best to make progress toward achieving my goals? Did I do my best to find meaning? Did I do my best to be happy? Did I do my best to build positive relationships? And did I do my best to be fully engaged? Now, I've done a lot of research around these six questions. 79 studies. 2,537 participants, we've studied this. We asked people to answer these questions for two weeks. What have we learned? Two weeks later, 37% of the people who participate say, I'm better at everything. 65% better at four out of six, 89% better at at least one, about 11% say no change, about 0.4% say they got worse. Why? Every day these six questions get me to focus on not what I cannot change, they can focus on what I can change. And what is the one thing I can always change? Did I do my best? What is it about being your best that's so important? Doing my best is so important because that's the only thing I can change. Fate is the hand of cards we've been dealt. Choice is how we play the game. All we can do in life is our best. At any second in time, all you can do is do your best now. By focusing on this, it takes away victimhood poor me, it's not fair, it's not right, I'm a victim, and gets me to focus not on what I can't change, which is fate. It gets me to focus on what I can change, choice. One of the things that you've taught me is this value-based approach. And I would love for you to talk about how you get paid or why you do or don't get paid, and what does that look like, and why do you do it? I spend zero time convincing anyone. If people don't care, I don't care. Since I don't get paid if they don't get better, I have no interest in convincing anyone of anything. In fact, I never prove to my clients what I do is worth their time and money. They have to convince me it's worth their time and money. It's been almost 20 years that we have had a professional relationship, and I have to tell you, every moment has been inspiring. You've been a wonderful coach, advisor, a mentor, and I respect you highly. Thank you for everything you've done for my career. Well, I feel the same way about you. Thank you so much for all you've done for me. The work we've done together in terms of understanding global leadership has not only made a huge difference in my career, it's made a positive difference in my life. Well, Marshall, it has been a pleasure having you with us today. We are so happy that you are sharing our first Fearless Leaders Entertainment Network feature, and we hope to see you and learn from you in the future. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you for watching the Fearless Leaders Entertainment Network. To find out how you can become a fearless leader, visit our website or order a copy of the book, Fearless Leaders, Sharpen Your Focus, available in paperback on Amazon or through Kindle.